Okay, this is a uh, second part to looking at BusyBox's HTTPD web server. Uh, I hope that you watched last week's video where we set up just a basic server. Today we're actually going to start working with server-side scripting. So if you want to create certain scripts such as Bash scripts or Python scripts or really any scripting or even languages that aren't scripting language, you can run pretty much any program and output the the uh, the output of that program is HTML to create GUIs for your whatever scripts. Uh, so, uh, again, we last week we created a folder called www on my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go into there and we have one file in there which is an HTML file. Now by default, unless you tell it otherwise, uh, you, we're going to use a, another folder within what would be your web server's root folder, which is this folder here, and that folder will be a CGI-bin, and that's where you'll place any server-side scripts. Now you can change this in a configuration file, which we will talk about in a future video, uh, but by default, all your scripts can go in there, so CGI-bin, and we're gonna go into there. Uh, actually, let's just use Vim instead of going in there, and we'll just say inside that folder, let's create a folder called um, my.sh and we'll create a shell script uh, and I will say bin bash because I want it to be a bash script although you know make sure there is bash on your system a lot of cases where you might be using busy boxes HTTPD will be on lighter weight systems such as arm devices uh, phones and routers which could have bash on them but a lot of times they don't uh, so you may want to use the standard sh uh, which in this particular case is not going to make a difference so I'll just do that but you can use bash or whatever script interpreter you want uh, just as long as it's installed on the system now let's go ahead and say echo and again we'll say hello world now we'll save that and we'll make it executable by changing mod plus x so now it's executable I can run that script right here in my shell and you can see it outputs hello world okay great so you think at this point oh I'll just go in and run that on my server so we'll start up the server like we did last time with busybox httpd whatever port in this case port 8080 uh, and we'll say foreground make it verbose and we'll say the home directory is the current directory we're in but it's nice to have that there in case we're accidentally in a different directory we can hit enter and at this point I can go to my web browser I can type in the IP address of my server and if I hit enter we're gonna get uh, you know there's no index file so it's gonna say 404 error there but what I can say at this point is forward slash CGI dash bin forward slash and the name of our script which I already forgot, oh, I think it's my.sh. We'll hit enter and you realize there's no output and no errors. Why is that? Well, although our script is running, it didn't output everything that the web browser is looking for. So what we need to do is we need to give just two commands uh, at the beginning of our script. So let's go ahead and kill our web server down here and go back into our script. So I'm gonna, again, use Vim as my text editor, but use whatever text editor you feel comfortable with. And before Hello World, before, at the beginning of any script or program that you're running, you're gonna to wanna to type in echo, and we're gonna say content-type colon text HTML. This is telling the web browser, you know, okay, this is a text HTML file. Without that, it doesn't know what to do with it, so it's it's not going to be displaying it properly. And then echo with uh, nothing there, just two quotes, because it, it needs to have the web browser is looking for this, and then an empty line, and then after that, it will start printing out whatever output the script outputs. So we will save that run our web server again, start up our web server, and I'll come up here and hit F5, and there we go, we have hello world. So it's working, great. So control C to kill our server, and I'll vim back into our script, and I'll add another line. I'll say echo, this is a test. Now, if I was to run this script from our shell here, everything looks good, it outputs, you know, our our content type and the empty line that it needs after that. 
and then we have our hello world and test. Now, those of you who are familiar with HTML, even a little bit, you probably know what's already going to be wrong with this when we run this, is that HTML web browsers, HTML by default, ignores white spaces and new lines. It has tags for that sort of thing. So if we come up here and hit F5, it outputs the information. It says, hello world, and this is a test, but all on one line rather than two lines. And if we uh, look at the source code inside our web browser, you can see it is two lines. It's just not designed to be displayed like that in a web browser. So uh, well, all we have to do is add a line break in there. So coming back down here and killing my server, I'm going to go, and again, you can have two shells open. You don't have to kill the server each time. That's just what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to come in here and I can do this. I can say, uh, put a tag for line break, you know, less than BR greater than. I can save that, start up our server again, hit F5, and there they are on the two different lines. Now, the good thing about this is if we can also, you know, save room in our code and actually do all this oops, in one command. Doing it like this will I'll do the same thing. So, see, I'm refreshing and it's outputting the same. So, let's now uh start running some actual commands besides just an echo command. So I'm going to kill our server here. I'm going to go vim into our shell script here. And I will add in, let's say we want to display the date. And I can just say date, because that's the date command. Uh, we'll probably want to put a new line, or how about a horizontal break in here. So we'll say hr, which will give us a horizontal line break. Okay, so we'll do that. And, oops, and we will now Bring up our web browser again, start up our web server, F5 that, and we got hello world, this is a test, and we got the date output there. And so again, you can generate any type of HTML you want. You can create buttons, uh, you know, headers, whatever, uh, just by adding tags. So let's say we wanted to, to add some sort of tag uh, and make that, that date larger. We can make it a, a header tag, which isn't really necessary best way to do that, uh, but it's what I'm going to do. So what I can do here is I can say, okay, echo h1 tag, and then after the date command, I can say echo forward slash close the h1 tag. Save that, start our server up, refresh up here, and there you can see the date is larger now. So again, any type of HTML output, which can uh, be, you know, colors, font size, different types of fonts, buttons, uh, iframes, tables, cells, any of that stuff. So you can create any type of HTML GUI for any type of program or script this way, uh, because you can call you can run any type of script or call any type of binary file that you have permission for right here. And just remember to put your new lines where you need them and format it as you would an HTML document. So let's control C to kill that and go ahead and here again and we'll say, okay, date. And let's say we want to know a little bit more about the system. We can say uname A. And again, if we run this script from the shell, we get the output, you know, we have the HTML tags here. And of course you can, well, I'm manually putting the HTML tags. There are cases where you'll uh, generate them based on the output of your script. But uh, right here you can see the output gives the date and time. And we also have information on the system itself, uh, which uh, will be displayed up here. Once I run our web server again using the same command, and we'll hit F5 up here, and there we go. We have this now. We didn't have to put a new line break because headers, uh, the H1 tag already puts a new line break, so that automatically is on another line. And um, that's it. That's it for for basic uh, scripts. But as you can see, you can run anything. And again, oh well, uh, I want to point out that this actually that isn't just it. I do need to explain something very important about this. Uh, one, if any of your scripts are going to get any type of input. You definitely want to be careful about that as with any server. Um, and we may get into that probably in a future tutorial. But um, remember that when I'm starting BusyBox as I am right here, 
it's running as whatever user is starting the server. So in this particular case, it's running it as Pi, which is a regular user uh, and has access to that user's files, among other things. So you probably want to create a special user just for um, your web server. When you run something like Apache, it's actually running as a www-data user, or at least in that group. Um, because the shell script is running at. So if you were to run this script, let's say you were to uh, use uh, sudo or, or run, log in as root, it will be running with those privileges, uh, which could be very bad if you're allowing you input. And in most cases should not be allowed. Now there are certain cases where you will uh, actually be doing that, but you'll take other safety precautions. Uh, but the way you tell it, you either run it as that user or you can use the dash u option, dash u, and then type in the username. So user, let's say the username was Bob. I don't have a Bob user on here, so probably get an error, yeah. So no, no user group name Bob. But you would want to use that dash u to say what user you will be uh, starting BusyBox's HTTPD as. But without that, it's starting as whatever user is starting up that server, which can be useful in certain cases, um, especially if you're going to be creating user interfaces for your system. I'll give you a quick example of that is uh, uh, the distribution Slitaz, if I'm pronouncing that properly. I've talked about many times. It's a very lightweight um, user interface, and they have uh, basically their control panel is a web interface using BusyBox, and it is running... Uh, I'm uh, pretty sure, well, as some user would privileges, uh, since it's probably root or something along those lines, which sounds dangerous and, and can be, but, you know, what they do, and that's something I'll go over in a future tutorial, is setting it as a loopback only, meaning the only person that will be able to access the web server is the computer itself. Uh, so you definitely would still have a concern of users on the system gaining access to something in that particular case, although it hopefully will be password protected. But no other computer should be able to connect to the server in that case. And that's something I'll go over in a future tutorial. And that's a very common used uh, technique is to start up a web server for a lot of programs and apps nowadays. You just don't really realize that you think that they're local apps, which they are, but they're actually running through a web server either like this or something designed by the developers themselves. So. That's a quick look. We're going to be looking at more of HTTPD uh, BusyBox's uh, web server here in the coming weeks. And I hope that you're enjoying these tutorials. And again, this very, very lightweight, small, but still a very powerful web server. And, it, and BusyBox itself is under a couple of megabytes. It isn't very big at all. And this is just a small part of it. And again, already on probably your phone or router in many cases uh, and other devices like that. And I love lightweight things, I love playing around, and I love the power of this tool. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so that I know that you enjoyed this topic. Uh, be sure to visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000.